Hello everyone and welcome to another SQL video with Learn at NoStar. Today we are going to write a SQL query to find consecutive empty seats. This is a very common interview question, also a lead code question in which you are asked to find n number of consecutive empty seats for booking in let's say a cinema hall. There can be various approaches to solve this SQL query but we are going to write a solution using the SQL windows functions. So here is our example table called seating. You have a seat ID and you have another column called free, which has a value of Y if the seat is empty and a value of N if the seat is not empty. In our example, the seat ID also tells us the sequence of the seats. So step one is just identifying the empty seats. So we are going to write a case statement saying when the column free is equal to Y, then 1, else we are going to assign it a value of 0 and as empty seat. Now let's say we want to find three consecutive empty seats. So in our example, if we go to seat number 9, we see that it's an empty seat. The seat before 9, just preceding seat number 9, is also an empty seat and the seat following seat number nine is also an empty seat. So our logic for finding three consecutive empty seats is going to be checking each row to see if it is an empty seat or not, then checking the preceding row and seeing if that is also an empty row, and then checking the following row to see that it is also an empty row. If all the three rows are empty, which means we have three consecutive empty seats. Now to implement this, we have already written a case statement wherein we are assigning a value of one to each empty seat. So if the three seats are empty, I'm going to do a sum on this case statement, which is going to add up each empty seat. So for three consecutive empty seats, it's going to give me an output of three. Now the next step is to define my windows frame for counting these empty seats preceding and following seats. So to define a windows frame, we have to use the over clause and we're going to order by the seat ID and define a windows frame using the rows keyword, rows between one preceding and one following. Now, if we execute this query and look at our table data and go back to our row number nine, you will see that the sum for this particular row is three because the seat itself is an empty seat and the seats preceding and following it are also empty seats. Now let's make it dynamic and say we wanted to find four consecutive empty seats. So we don't have that data in our table. So I'm going to update row number seven as Y as empty. So now let's run this query again and see what are the results. So since now seven is also an empty seat, row number eight has also count a count of three because it has identified three empty seats preceding and following row number eight. Now to identify four empty seats, we will need to update our windows frame to contain four rows. So you can change it either by changing your preceding number of rows or your following number of rows. So you can either say two preceding and one following. So if and execute, you will see that row number nine has been identified as the seat for which there are two preceding empty rows and one following empty row. You can also do it by doing one preceding and two following. So what you need to make sure by changing your windows frame is that you have four records in your windows frame. And when you try to identify the empty seats, you have to identify the current row and whatever your windows frame is defining. So in our case for this right now, an empty seat, four empty seats would be the current row, the one preceding row and two following row. So similarly, you can modify your query for any number of empty seats that you want to identify. The only thing that you need to make sure is that after identifying the empty seats, you select the correct preceding, correct number of preceding and following records. So now that we have identified the empty seats, the only thing we need to do is put it in a sub query or better still, we can have a CTE and then we can just run a select query on top of this CTE is equal to, let's say four. So if you execute this query, you will get seat ID eight. Now, if you want to identify all the four seat IDs, then you can just modify this query and select 
the lag seat ID, which is the previous seat ID. And you have to order by seat ID as seat one. And the current row seat ID will be seat two. Then we have to find two following records. So we have to use lead, lead seat ID. This will be seat three. And then we have to move forward by two seats. So again, we're going to use the lead and we're going to give it an offset of two. So it will move forward by two records and this will be seat four. And we have to use the lead function. And now in our query, we can just select the four seats that we just identified in our CTE. And execute this query and you're going to get the set of the four empty seats. I hope the video was useful. If you like the video, then please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also share, comment and like this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Goodbye.